Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you, and today we're going to be doing uh, my first iFinity review. Uh, we're going to be doing it courtesy of a HIS 6990. One thing I will say is that uh, we're going to be using uh, a Yama ProLite E2473 HDS screens, matching set of three, 1920 by 1080 which means we're going to be playing in 5760 by 1080 in the iFinity mode. Uh, also, this is going to be the first, uh, or rather, this is one of many videos, because not only am I going to do a roundup with lots of clips for uh, all the games, and then um, a conclusion at the end, as we would always do, but I'm also doing uh, a, a lot of 15-minute gameplay Video, so you can literally just see the gameplay, keep an eye on the frames per second. So you're going to get a lot more videos out of this one review. And it's just something I thought I'd try this once and see how we get on, and maybe we'll roll it out across all of the videos. But obviously, the card on test today is the HIS 6990. I've done 6990s before, um, uh, but this is the first HIS one. Uh, and we thought we'd give it a bit of a twist, which is why I brought all these screens and everything in. So a big thank you to Iyama for that. Uh, the rig, as I'm going to say later on in the video, because I've already made it, I'm actually uh, making this bit afterwards. Uh, but we've basically got a Gigabyte G1 Assassin, uh, 980X, 4.4 GHz, um, 6 GB of uh, Mushkin Ridgeback, uh, and then a Nocturne HD 14. And we're going to be testing a wide range of games, not just going to be doing a few quite a few, Crisis 2, um, uh, Stalker, Medal of Honor, Call of Duty, Crisis Warhead, there's a, there's a fair few games there, we've chucked a few extra ones in, uh, just to be able to really stress them, Metro for argument's sake in um, iFinity looks amazing, so there's a lot to come, it's a big long video, um, so yeah, uh, for all the regulars, people that know, Pause now, get it in 1080, go and make a cup of tea, get comfortable. For all the new people, I do make longer videos. This is going to be the long one with lots in it, but there are lots of other uh, gameplay videos as well. Um, and uh, yeah, don't forget to subscribe and comment. We do like uh, feedback no matter what it is. But without further ado, let's crack on with the rest of the video. Right then guys, just to show you the settings of the game just quickly. You can see it there split across, but we're playing in 5760 by 1080. That's because we've got three 1920 by uh, 1080 monitors. The monitors are Yama Pro Light E2473 HDS screens. You can see all the game settings that we're going to be playing in. Uh, because of the uh, lengths of the cables, like the DVI cables, Basically, I've had to put the bench underneath the rig, and essentially there we've got a Gigabyte um, G1 Assassin. That's the top end uh, gaming motherboard from Gigabyte. Six Gigabyte of um, uh, Mushkin Ridgeback RAM. We've also got a 980X in there because everyone moaned last time I made these videos, so I used the 980 this time, which is a 200 times 22 for 4.4 gigahertz. Uh, with a Nocturne HD 14 and obviously we're playing with a HIS 6990 in Ifinity mode uh, so a single card um, also if you keep your eye on the far left screen up in this top left hand corner we are also um, going to be uh, where well you can see fraps there basically so keep an eye on that screen if you want to see the frames per second Right then guys, we're right in the beginning of um, Call of Duty. Fraps is up in the top left hand corner of the screen. There. You're going to have to play in 1080p if you want to see how big that is. But I'll just zoom you in quickly. Get 
Pigs in the gun. You were heading for Castro's compound. We're losing him. Do it again. We have no choice. What the fuck? This compound. Cause these men should be hitting the airfield. Any minute. There's a signal. Now! Look up. This is it! And guys, this is the settings for Crisis 2, 5760 by 1080 obviously we're running on 3 by 1080 monitors, the monitors are Iyama Pro Light E2, sorry, E, <laughs> I will get it out, E2473 HDS monitors, we're running 3 matching screens, um, basically if we move down the gaming rig is underneath just because it was easier to route the cables down there. Uh, we're gaming on a HIS 6990 which is what we're testing today. The, mo the motherboard is a Gigabyte Assassin which is the top of the range Gigabyte gaming board. Uh, 6 Gigabyte of Mushkin Ridgeback Redline, Noctua NHD 14 and then we've got a 980X at 4.4 GHz, uh, 200 times 22 Mr. Strawberry is the uh, guest gamer today, and he's gaming on a Corsair AX power supply table. If he moves his head, you can see there's four boxes there, and that's literally just so that we can keep his head out of the way of all the screens. But, it's time for me to be shush, and it's time for us to watch some Crisis 2 gameplay. Uh, and, yeah, in Infinity mode, let's see what it looks like. Weapons to avoid being detected. The laser sabotage allows more accurate fire from the hip. Tactical options. This area locked down. Oversight drop team are securing the crash site. I want blue lemon.
infinity uh, frames per second is up here. It's currently uh, flicking between the lowest I've seen is 40, oh right, now it's gone up to 35, so 35 to about 55 on average. Um, average kind of like mean speed would be around the 42 mark, I'd say, a bit more pace depending on the actions. Right then guys and girlies, Crisis Warhead. These are the uh, settings that we're going to be using to play this game. Basically what we've tried to do with this and all the other ones that we've made the videos of in this series is uh, have a um, very minimum gaming uh, frames per second of about 30, 35. We've gone for the best settings possible. So we're playing 5, 6, 70 by 1080, obviously maxing the resolution out. Uh, no anti-aliasing on this, and if Straubs flicks over to advanced, we're playing enthusiast uh, uh, settings on uh, everything there. Now if I zoom back out, you can see that we're playing across three screens. The three screens are Yama Pro Lite E2473HDS monitors. They're all 1920 by 1080. The, game, the actual rig itself is underneath the desk. Thank you. 
2, he recently requested a special delivery from Yong Byung-Kun. That's their main nuclear research site. Exactly. I need to take this higher, but consider this your top intel target until we have clearance on how to engage it. Now, this is interesting. We've received reports from Team Idaho of a Korean propaganda station flooding their channels. The Korean Milnet pinpoints the source here, close to your position. Add it to your secondary targets. Copy, come on. Right then guys, these are the settings that we are using for uh, Mafia 2. 3x1920x1080 which is uh, 5670 by 5760 by 1080 as it always has been before. You can see the settings down there. Obviously we wanted to keep between sort of like 30 and 40 frames per second as a bare minimum, which is why we've not just completely maxed everything out. But anyway, let's get on with some gameplay.
follow me. Right then guys, this is the settings uh, for Metro, 5760 by 1080, very high, DX10, um, AAA, AF four times, and then you can see some more details down there. No messing about, you know what the rig specs are because we've spoken about it loads in this video already. So I'll be quiet and just get on with the gameplay. Wake up people, people, wake up for Christ's sake! Boys, boys, wake up, what is this? Shit, it's no good. Oh, oh God, oh, shut them up. the ladders, come on. And you hope it's gonna get me. station was only all right boys let's train to a friend our tomb who goes right through monsters and anomalies alike don't you do you hell if not for you our tomb we have been shredded like cabbage you deserve a medal. <laughs> or at least some extra ammo. Here, take them. To you. Adieu! To you! Adieu! You really new to that shit? Right then, guys and girlies, with uh, Medal of Honor, uh, everything that's maxed out, obviously still running 5-6. 5760 by 1080 but everything is maxed uh, this has got seems to have a buffer so if you see the frames a second stop up here at about 62 61 62 that's hit hitting the buffers of the, uh, the actual game because it's capped uh, but uh, yeah let's get on with some gameplay Fire 
Right then guys, on to uh, Stalker, just showing you the uh, first mem menu, you can see they're on DX11, quality settings are medium, 5760 by 1080 as with all the others, and then that's the secondary kind of advanced menu. It's not completely maxed out but Anyways, enough's enough, let's get on with some gameplay.
other guys, absolutely monstrously long video, but never mind, we're all getting used to it by now. Uh, don't forget what I said at the beginning of the video, there are a lot of uh, other just gameplay videos. Um, so you can sit there and watch see what the frames a second like, kind of get an idea really. I just try to do something slightly different. Um, now the HIS 6990 is a reference card. Uh, I was going to uh, um, stick it up there but I want to lean on, on the box. Uh, it is a reference card, we didn't overclock it, it was run uh, at stock. Uh, in the normal stock mode as well, so you could technically, you know, warm, uh, overclock the card uh, if you wanted to for slightly better performance. Um, and obviously, this is just you can see the settings. We've ranged the settings throughout the game to try and get a minimum of about 30 frames a second, just to kind of give you an idea on where you can go. Uh, obviously, you could get higher frames a second if you change the settings slightly. So we were just trying to, rather than just having them running really slow, we were trying to give you something to watch uh, and see what is possible and the most that you can get out of them, with keeping the games, you know, really, you know, reasonably playable. Um, and I've got to admit, once you've kind of seen this kind of thing, it's a bit nuts. I was letting Mr. Strawberry do the gaming and staying back with the camera and doing stuff. So I was kind of just sat there watching it and games like Metro and uh, Crisis 2 look absolutely amazing. Uh, you will need to kind of sit back a bit from the screen so if you are planning on doing this make sure you've not got a tiny desk because you really do need to be able to sit slightly further back to be able to get the most out of it. Um, uh, and a dark room kind of helps as well but oh, oh my, it's Crisis 2, all the kind of Everything that's going on in that video across the screens just looks absolutely unreal. In Crisis 2, I definitely, sorry, uh, Metro, where it is a dark uh, game, it's quite difficult to film it. Um, but if, you, if you're playing in a dark room and stuff like that, um, it, it does look the gonads. Um, and uh, something we found, because we hid the speakers behind the outside monitors as well, and it was kind of bouncing up the walls. Um, and you do get really into it as well. There's a couple of times that actually, you know, things actually made me jump and stuff because I'd got so into it. Now, obviously, three screens and a six nine ninety, that type of thing. It's it's a lot of money. Uh, but what we were trying to do is just test the card for those of you out there that you know maybe not necessarily want to buy it, but are interested to see whether these cards can cope with the three screens. Now it's becoming more of the kind of, of a supported thing with the the bigger cards now and the games. Um, and obviously, you know, some of the games you can't necessarily max it out because you are trying to play across three screens. But like, for argument's sake, Medal of Honor is a game, it's a console port, blatant console port, everyone knows it is. That's why it's capped at 62 frames a second. Um, but we were playing that, absolutely maxed out, at, um, in high affinity, and it was still hitting the 61, 62 frames a second buffer. Now, a lot of people get confused and think that's V-Sync, but it's not. That's actually the cap that they put on the car on the game. There is a couple of tweaks and stuff that you can do to take the cap off, but we've seen quite a bad tearing and stuff when you start to do that. The game's capped for a reason. But with something like Medal of Honor, do you know what I mean? Max it out, chuck your, uh, your card in, obviously you've spent a bit of money on it, on your three screens. And it's still hitting the buffers. I'm not condoning it, but when you kind of see that, and the quality of the game isn't bad. It's not like it looks as bad as it does on the the, uh, the consoles. When you see it on a PC and you have maxed it all out, you can kind of then get the a uh, reason why the game ports are not necessarily a hundred percent bad thing. Obviously, I completely understand that we need very very intensive games to keep pushing the GPU manufacturers to build better products. Because if all the games are really easy, uh, we'd never get anywhere. I mean, look at the hoo-ha was caused when the first Crisis was released. Everyone was falling over themselves to make cards that would play that game smoothly, and still today we find cards that won't. So we do need very, very intensive games. But the odd game that will play across three screens and still look all Gucci is, has got its benefits as well. But at the end of the day, we're here to review the HIS. Now, it's a reference card at reference clocks, but it's a very good card from a good manufacturer with good uh, warranty and backup. 
You can get it from quite a few retailers in the UK. It's really popular in the States and in Asia. So it's an easy card to get hold of. Comes with all the fittings that you want, all the connections. You get uh, an active display port adapter to DVI, a passive display port adapter to DVI, a uh, display port to HDMI. Um, it's yeah, it's it comes with everything in the box that you could possibly need. I still don't understand why they keep sending the Molex adapters because if your PSU hasn't got the power adapters, it's probably not going to have the uh, Kahunas to be able to drive the car properly anyway. So I'd avoid those. But as for Looking at the card, obviously it's a stonkingly powerful card, so we, do you know what I mean? It's a massive, massive thumbs up for that. But we just wanted to show you with this what you can really do with these cards if you really want to. You're not really stressing them when you're running a 24 inch monitor, really. Um, they don't ever get a chance to stretch their legs properly. But when you get a three screen gaming like this, um, get it in and you can absolutely run away with it. Now obviously with the uh, the reference design and the cooler and stuff I did pick up about it, they do you know click and pop um, and the coolers aren't you know quiet by any stretch of the imagination but that's you know that's because it's a reference design card, it's a reference design cooler so I'm not going to go over the stuff that I've said previously we're just going to go over the performance and the iFinity game side of things which I've got to admit I've been severely impressed with because although I work on three screens on my main rig I don't actually uh, game in iFinity or anything very seldomly do I actually game unless I'm you know, doing it for part of a review but now I've seen this it's brilliant and the only thing that I'm a bit still not that you know 100% with as far as iFinity is concerned I think that you should be able to manually set your games to go into iFinity mode and when it's in a normal desktop mode, you have three separate screens, so it's good for kind of a working environment. Um, and like with WinRAR, when you right hand click uh, and it go, you can go to RAR this or unRAR this. I think there should be a setting there where you can set application for iFinity, so you can go to the, where the game, the actual game um, file is that gets opened, go to that, select it to run in iFinity or even in the shell so you have to go to properties and go in and tick something, open in iFinity mode. That would be brilliant because then you just open your game as usual and then pop, bang, it opens on all three screens. When you close it, everything's still there on individual screens. If AMD could do that, then, and I've been saying this since they first introduced iFinity, if AMD could do that, and it's a shell fix, you know what I mean, it really wouldn't take them that long to get sorted really considering you know like WinRAR uses it and has been for years um, if they could get that sorted out they would be on to an absolute winner uh, because that really is my biggest gripe and it's why I don't game across all three so you know even me as a professional or you know for want of a better term really if you want to call me a professional um, I still you know when I use my main rig for it I still game on one because I like to have my three screens my work environment and I can't bother to keep switching between the two all the time so if you could set your game or you know certain applications or however you want to put it to open across all three screens in that fully 5760 uh, 5, by 1080 res then that would be absolutely amazing but I'm going to leave that there it's a long enough video as it is I've been jabber yakking for ages I do apologize for uh, taking so much of your bandwidth this week but I do have a lot of lot of stuff coming for you now we're gonna have to try and keep the flow I'm gonna have to uh, really really get my uh, my head down to get everything uh, everything done but for now at least this is Tiny Tom Logan with his first iFinity triple screen gaming review out